right, everybody. Welcome back to West Corners Custom Cycles. I'm Pat. Welcome back to the Underground Garage. I'm back on this Ligero build. Couldn't figure out. It was driving me nuts why it wouldn't start. I went through, spent a couple hours. I double checked everything. Went back through the carburetor. I've got good spark. I've got good gas, air, everything. You know, I'm just getting down to the cylinder. I didn't check one thing. I called up my buddy. We got talking about it. And he said, did you check compression? I said, it's got a thousand miles on it. Why would it have bad compression? But what I didn't say to you guys was, when I first got this bike, it wasn't turning over. I had to put a little oil down the cylinder of it to get it to free up and start turning over. And I went and checked compression on it, and I got about two-thirds of the compression I'm supposed to have. So, I'm going to spend today tearing this jug off of here. So I gotta take the exhaust off, I gotta take the carburetor off. There's an engine mount right here that I gotta disconnect. Once I get those things off, I can pull the head off. There's four nuts holding that on. I've already got the spark plug out. And uh, then I can slide this jug up off of here and I can take a look at the uh, rings and I'll bet dimes the dollars that uh, those rings are froze up on that piston. They're not expanding out, they're not taking up the gap between the piston and the cylinder wall, and we're losing compression, and that's why it's not starting. So I'm going to pull it apart, see what condition that cylinder wall's in, take a good look at the piston and the rings, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to have to call and get a uh, new uh, base gasket and a new head gasket, because I don't want any leaks when I put it back together, and uh, may take a day or two to free up those rings anyway, so... That's where we're at, and I'm going to get started on that right now. All right, see you in a minute. All right, I wanted to get you in a little closer here so you can see what we're about to do. This is very simple. There isn't much to it at all. I already took the liberty of getting all the tools out. Um, you're going to have to take this bolt out here. It's a 13 millimeter. It's got a nut on one side, just a bolt that goes through there, goes through the back of the head. You're going to have to take this exhaust pipe off. The way you do that, take a screwdriver, stick it in the slot, hit it with a hammer, spin it off. I've already taken the nut off on the back of the uh, exhaust pipe so we can just drop that whole thing down. There's two 5 millimeter Allens that hold the... Uh, carburetor manifold to the jug and up on top there are four bolts they are uh, 10 millimeter so we'll take those off and this off take the head off I will take the carburetor off and I will take the exhaust off and then we can just slide this up off that'll expose the piston and um, there's a little wire clip I'll show you how the piston comes off and then I'm going to probably soak that overnight so we'll come back tomorrow and finish this up but let me show you how this all comes apart. Okay. Five millimeter Allens. And we'll zip around and get the one out the other side and that'll be all set and free. I'm going to leave the, uh, the fuel line and the uh, throttle cable hooked right up to it. There's no sense taking that all apart again. Like I said, I was out here and I went through all this stuff again uh, just to make sure everything was good. I went through this carb again. Um, I actually even took a, uh, a vacuum tool that I have I went down inside this crank and put some suction down there just to make sure everything was uh, there was nothing filling up the crankcase if somebody had flooded it out real bad that would have been another reason possibility why it wasn't starting
Okay, that's out and off. As you can see, it's out of the way. I was kicking my butt a little bit, so I turned the camera off for a second until I got it off. Now, thirteen millimeter a wrench on the other side. Pull the bolt out of there. This really just stripped this down. It's only going to take about 15 minutes at that. Okay. That's the engine mount bolt. Yeah. Hammer and screw hammer and uh, screwdriver. And the slot right here on this ring. Just like a nut, a nut. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Knock it around till it's loose. Unscrew it. It'll slide right down the pipe. Just like so. Now. There we go. Like I said, this is the mount that it has down on the other end. Just a nut and a bolt. Take it off, lay it down. Now the only thing we got left, four 10 millimeter bolts. I'm actually gonna put the plug back in this thing because I don't want any dirt getting down in there. Now it don't really matter, we're taking this part apart. But once we get this jug off of here, the connecting rod to the piston is gonna be sticking up with the piston on it. You wanna take a clean rag, I cannot stress enough, a clean rag and uh, Put it in the hole, pack it all the way in there around that uh, connecting rod because you do not want any dirt getting in there and you don't want anything getting dropped in there. You're going to have to pull this motor apart and fish it out of there. So just a word of warning. Another thing you should do, go around this base here, clean it up as best you can so when you pull this jug off, you're not going to get any dirt down in there. All right. 10 millimeter. And I wish I knew what the torque spec on this was. I looked in the book the other day and it just says put it back together in reverse of uh, how you took it apart. It doesn't give a torque spec for those four bolts on the top there. So I'm wondering if I should get a wasn't a whole lot of, I just went to see what kind of pressure was on them. I kind of guessed when I took them off, really wasn't a whole lot. Holy mackerel, that wasn't a lot at all. I know two guys that used to work on these at the dealership back in the day, so I'll make a phone call or two and see if I can't get one of them guys to tell me if they remember what torque spec used to be on these things. Good Lord, that is just like no pressure whatsoever to loosen those up. Absolutely. 
I would certainly think it would have been more than that, but I guess not. They're just a tiny little motor. coming off by hand so that's a good thing they're not bound up on there sorry not trying to be in the way reach over the bike and get this one well, like I said, there's four of them. They form a square right around that spark plug hole. All 10 millimeters. Okay, that's that. Now, it looks like They have washers on them. Can't tell, but we'll see. Now, very gently. Hmm. How am I going to do that? This engine mount comes right across the front of this head and the studs come up through it so it doesn't want to let me lift it up to take it out of there. Hmm. Let me see if I can get it up high enough. Might just give me enough. I certainly hope so because I don't want to have to drop this motor out of here. Hmm. Sounds like it's hitting something. You've got to be kidding me. All right, I've got it all loose and ready to come apart. But that motor mount doesn't come off. It's welded, it's part of the bike. And it's not gonna let me come up high enough to get it off the cylinder. So I'm gonna have to either unhook the chain guard, because the two bolts from the front of the chain guard over here on the other side are going into the side of the case, and probably take this bolt out. If that allows me to tilt the motor forward a little bit, it should be enough to do what I got to do to get that off. And I shouldn't have to drop it out. I mean, it's only going to be one more bolt holding it on the, you know, from down here on the bottom. But all right, if I got to drop it down, I got to drop it down. I'll put a center block under it, set it on that, and do what we got to do. But we got to get it off of there. All right, I will be back. Okay, everybody, that seemed to work. I had to take this bolt out here. Um, on the other side, I had to undo the chain because 
front sprocket was keeping this motor from moving forward and as you can see now I can just pull the the head off of it it does have four washers surface on that. I'll clean all this up real good before I go and put everything back together. And now, if we're lucky, I should be able to break that. Cylinder free. Rubber hammer. Do not use a metal hammer. You will break fins on your coming. The head gasket. Before I get that off of there. I'm going to roll it back up. Damn it. Okay. I just wanted to get that piston higher up before I took this cylinder off of there. I guess it really didn't matter. Wiggle it a little at a time. It should come up off of there. Just like so. And I got some gas coming out of the carburetor float ball. Cylinder actually looks pretty nice. Let's set this down. I'm going to take a good look. Get this piston in the rings. And just as I suspected, the bottom one, one side of it is stuck, the other side's loose. And the top one looks like it might be, he froze up all the way around. Alright people, that answers my question and I guess I was right. There's two rings on this piston, only two. There is no oil ring. They are identical. And once you take, there's a little wire clip in the side of this piston in this hole right here you gotta take out with a pick. Make sure it does not go flying. Put a rag down around the base of this piston so it does not go down inside your motor. Once you get that off, you can slide, there's a, a little spacer tube that goes through it. You can slide that out, pull the piston off, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to uh, take this down on the workbench. 
and soak it until I get those rings free. And then we're going to put everything back together. See if I can find the edge of this clip. And like I said, like I just told you, put something around the base of that. Trying to stay out of your way here. And be very careful of this piston. It is aluminum. You do not want to burr it all up before you uh, get it off of here. You do, and it's going to score the heck out of the side of your cylinder, and you're going to be bumming. Okay. There. That should, in theory keep anything from going down in that hole. There's a little notch here in the side. It's not helping me a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Alright. I'm going to turn this camera off. You don't need to watch me monkey with this. I'm going to get that out of there and I'll come back and show you what's up. Okay, everybody. I wanted you to see what was going on here. See how... Let's see if I can get on it. See how that ring's moving? Oh, only this side of it's moving. On the other side of this gap right here, it's stuck in there. And this top ring, you can see wants to move a little bit. I sprayed a bunch of solvent on it. And I'm going to see if it eats away any of the deposits that are on it. And if I can't get it freed up that way, then I'm going to start spraying some uh, penetrating lube on it. Some PB Blast or something. And we'll see if we can't get them freed up. Once we get them freed up, we can put it back together and I guarantee this thing will start. All right, I'm going to let this soak overnight. I will be back in the morning. All right, everybody. I'm back. You just saw couple of seconds ago in this video, uh, me showing you the rings on that piston, how they were froze up. Half of one was freed up, but the other side of it was stuck. Anyway, that was four days ago. Last two days, I've been soaking them piston rings down, trying to get them out of there. Yesterday afternoon, about three in the afternoon, I got tugging on one too hard, and I snapped the ring. So, SOL there. Uh, so I came in, I looked around online, tried to find another set of uh, rings for the piston. Turns out that you can't just buy the rings, you got to buy the piston, the rings, the clip, the, the uh, pin that connects it to the connecting rod. Uh, it all comes in a kit. Uh, then I had to get the, um, the head gasket and the base gasket for the cylinder. So I ordered all that today. It said it's not going to be here with a couple other parts that I've I seen I needed for it. But anyway, um, all these parts aren't going to be here till they said February 4th or 7th in between there. Today's February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. So in the meantime, I'm going to get on that. Uh, I'm going to start the next video on this Ligero with me getting the piston off that connecting rod, cleaning up the gasket surfaces on this. Uh, there's some... They're not too horrible, really, but there's some buildup around here I want to get on. Ah. So anyway, that's what's going to be the beginning of our next video, and then it's going to be getting this all back together and getting it finally started and running down the road. So that's where we're at on all of that. I just wanted to get you up to speed on it, let you know what we were doing, where we're at. And, uh, so this thing is skidded to an absolute stop until I get those parts. I can prep it and get it ready for when they get here, and that's what I'll do. So in the meantime, 
Uh, let's see, today's Thursday, Groundhog's Day. Friday and Saturday are supposed to be in the single digits here in West Corners, New York. So I'm going to do my damnedest to stay out of that garage because it's going to be freezing out there. And even with my heaters, it just barely makes it bearable. So I got a couple other projects. I've been working on this. Um, I got to do a second coat on the white. So I'll probably do that this afternoon. And I told you guys... Uh, when I was doing the last video on the the 91 bagger that we're building, um, that I had a special project that I had shelled that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I'm going to make that video tonight. I might even set up a premiere for it. If I do, you'll get the notification. If not, I'll just put it up. But it is on a couple of uh, solo seats uh, with spring kits that I started making about a year ago. And... You got to check these out because they're really ridiculous. All right. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave you. You're up to speed. You know what's going on with this. Next video I'll put out is on them seats, and then I'm going to jump back on that bagger. I got to get the wiring done on that. So, all right. As always, ride safe. Live life behind bars, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.